The story of the two brothers, Mir Dast and Mir Mast, is interesting not just because of how it eventually played out, with one brother winning the Victoria Cross and the other one defecting to the Germans, but also because of how these two brothers ended up fighting against the Germans alongside the British and the French, because an Archduke of Austria-Hungary was assassinated by a Serbian. First up, let's address the Afridi bit. Both brothers were from Tira, which is currently in Pakistan, but was then just outside British India. They were Pashtuns, more specifically Afridis, who were fiercely independent and made excellent fighters, and particularly snipers, used to irregular fighting against the British at the border of what was then British India. So how did they end up in the Indian Army? Well, the British back then used to recruit for the army, mostly from ethnicities that they considered martial races. So the British used to recruit far and wide, not just from British India, but from provinces that were adjacent to it as well, such as the Northwest Frontier Province, and also from Nepal, where they used to recruit Gurkha troops. Well, that explains why the British wanted to hire these folks, but how does it explain why these folks wanted to join the army of a country that they didn't necessarily belong to? For one, this was a source of income, not just regular pay, but also the idea of a pension at the end of service. Two, the troops had access to education. Regimental centers would train the soldiers in not just basic reading and writing, but also arithmetic and music, to name a few other subjects. Of course, in the case of highly specific and specialized forces, such as the sappers or the engineers, the technical subjects that were covered in these regimental centers were pretty comprehensive. There was a whole bunch of other reasons why these folks ended up joining the British Indian Army, but we're not gonna get into all of that, and these are probably the two top reasons why they did. So that's how these two brothers ended up fighting against the Germans in Flanders. In 1915, between the 3rd and 4th of March, Mir Mast, along with a bunch of other Afridis, decided to leave their posts and head over to the German side. To his British superiors, this was quite a shocking act because Mir Mast was considered loyal and an excellent fighter. He was influenced by the leaflets that were dropped by the Germans, which talked about the Sultan's Jihad. But also, he was partly frustrated by the lack of opportunity in the British Indian Army. All Indian soldiers were considered to be junior to any British soldier, but also even Indian NCOs were considered to be junior to the junior most British officer. Anyway, so when Mirmas defected, the British retrieved a diary from his personal effects in which he had written two sets of words, one in an indecipherable language and the other their English meaning. These included the word testicles and breasts. I know it's kind of easy to laugh at this point, but what we're seeing here is a person who was curious about the world that he was in. Let's also not forget that the first thing anybody learns in a new language is how to swear in it. His brother, Mir Dast, meanwhile, was part of an attack against the Germans at Ypres in Belgium. As they attacked, they were heavily shelled by the Germans, killing hundreds and wounding a large number of people as well. Among those who were unharmed was Mir Dust, who was stuck in no man's land. At about 3 o'clock, the Germans released chlorine gas, and there were no gas masks for the troops at the time. Mir Dust inhaled the chlorine, but still managed to make his way back to his trench. Over there, he asked a fellow soldier to pour water over his head, and he went back into no man's land and retrieved eight British and Indian officers who were injured during the initial shelling. It was for this act of bravery that he was awarded the Victoria Cross. At this time, Mirmast was in Istanbul, on his way to Afghanistan, part of a secret German diplomatic mission. The Germans hoped to persuade the Emir of Afghanistan to join in with the Central Powers during the war. They also hoped that the entry of the Afghans on the German side would also mean that the tribals of the Northwest Frontier Province of British India would start to revolt as well thereby causing some kind of massive chain reaction and sequence of events getting the British kicked out of India. Anyway, spoiler alert, but the Emir of Afghanistan eventually chose neutrality in the war. Mirmas went back to Tira with two Turkish officers with whom he hoped to train a Tira regiment who would participate in the Sultan of Turkey's jihad against the British. He managed to convince 400 volunteers to sign up, most of them defectors from the British army. In this effort, he was supported by Sardar Nasrullah, who was the brother of the Emir at the time, who promised him money to pay his troops. With the promise of money guaranteed, Mirmas decided to borrow from money lenders and pay for the Tira regiment's troops himself. The elders of Tira, however, some of whom belonged to an anti-Jihad faction, decided that Mirmas' Tira regiment was causing too much unrest in their area. The two Turkish officers were sent packing and Mirmas' own house was set on fire. 
the promise of funds from Sardar Nasrullah did not come either. So that's where Meer Ma's story ends, homeless and penniless. Meer Dast was also in Tira at the time and by all accounts he wasn't too pleased by his brother's anti-British activities. Eventually, after recovering from his wounds, he made his way to Bombay where he was interviewed by the Times of India and received a hero's welcome. Once in Bombay, he rejoined with his regiment, the 55th Cokes Rifles. The position of Subedar Major had opened up in his regiment and Mirdas was the strongest candidate and most likely to get it. However, another Punjabi Muslim officer was appointed to the post because of seniority. Even though he hadn't experienced overseas combat, nor did he have any awards. This proved to be too much for Mirdas, who defected himself. It turns out that both brothers were more similar than the story of the surface would let us believe.